Welcome to Jets Rewind. I'm Marty Shupak. I'm joined by Ralph Sharega and Ray Clifford. And today uh, we are recording this on, uh, I guess it's uh, Friday, September 8th at uh, <laughs> 1230, just a few days before probably the most anticipated Jets opening game in a in a long time. And by the way, we're you could hear us on the Apple podcast, Spotify and all regular podcast stations, as well as Jets Rewind. Ray, how you doing out there? Good. Uh, excited, although uh, I don't like when the Jets are on national, the, the big game just by themselves. It, they don't do good with a, a lot of attention on them. Aaron Rodgers has won, I think, nine straight Monday night games, so... Well, I've uh, got streaks that we're going to talk I about. I know, yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about streaks. That's uh, That one's not going to get broken. <laughs> okay, and uh, Ralph, I know you have a – you're doing well, I assume. You have a uh, trivia. I do have a trivia question, and it is appropriate. The last time the Jets won a home opener, who was their starting quarterback? And I'll give you a hint. They, it wasn't the first game of the season. They actually started two road games, and then the third game was their home opener. They won it, and who was their starting quarterback? That's a very good question. Uh, I'm writing down who I think. Okay, all right. We'll come back to that at the end. And, um, you know, I, I Ralph brought up a couple of points on the agenda, and, and let's just start out right now. Ray, right now, after going through everything since we picked up um, uh, Ra Aaron Rodgers, who, who would you have rather had, David Carr and the draft picks, or would you rather have had uh, Aaron Rodgers? Well, you know, honestly, Rodgers is clearly the better quarterback. You know, that isn't up for debate, but – my heart says Rodgers. My head says Carr. Um, I, I love having Rodgers on the team, but I still think this team has uh, some major holes to fill, pretty much the offensive line and a couple other spots, but mainly the offensive line. And I just think that uh, we gave up a lot for Aaron. But uh, Well, gun to your head, what would you do today? I like Rodgers. I'm I'm gonna I mean I remember when we were talking about it last year and, and saying, you know, what if we could get Rodgers? But I didn't think it was a reality. And back right. then it was one of the shows and we were talking about how much he'd cost. And I still thought I thought we could get him for less than we gave up, actually. I didn't think we'd give up this much, but I still I like having him, but I just fear the that they aren't gonna protect him enough. But I, I like having him on there. He's he's just so good. It's unbelievable. He changes his whole offense. Ralph, what about you? Uh, uh, well, I, I remember when we would started the quarterback hunt. Uh, Marty. Oh, Marty. You got a sticker on your collar. I got what? The sticker on your collar. Yeah, what right. did that say? Is that that's a laundry <laughs> sticker? You, you you had it cleaned and pressed. Uh, yeah. So when well, we started how, when we started the quarterback hunt, I think all three of us felt Carr first, Rogers second because of the youth and also because of giving up the draft picks. Right. But after seeing, you know, Rogers in the last couple of months, I think what he brings intangibly and has brought to this franchise is unbelievable. And yeah. uh I you know you say everyone says oh my god we gave up so much for him you know, you think about what the 49ers gave up for Trey Lance who's a a complete bomb and the 49ers are still a very very strong team yeah. um what Carolina gave up for Bryce Young and you know I can go on and uh, Russell Wilson so I I I don't think we paid the premium that we we might have to uh that these other teams have so and 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 of course, as Jet fans, we're all Jet fans. We know, even though we love the draft, that the majority of the Jets' first and second round picks over the years have not been very good. You know, I mean, they hit on some, but they miss on more. So while we love draft picks, I think it, it can't even come close to what what he's brought to this team right now. Ralph, I would agree 100% with what you said. And I wasn't a Aaron Rodgers fan. I couldn't stand his smug look and whatever. But he, he's really embraced his position, embraced the city, embraced the team. 
uh, embrace the uh, the second string quarterback who I don't like, and and I, I think one of the keys I is, didn't know that <laughs> is that a I've, I've always said that he, he's going to raise the level of the play of the team, and besides that, um, last year our defense, as good as it was, we really couldn't get any ideal uh, look at the defense because. We led the world in three and outs. I mean, they were always on the field. Yeah, so, yeah it was more more than scoring touchdowns. A lack of that, it was those three and outs. That was yeah. ridiculous. Uh, that team, the defense had to crumble eventually. It was yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it was perfect common sense. Ray, were you going to add something? I was just going to say, I'm amazed our defense held up. Yeah, as well as they did really. You know, because uh, I thought I thought by week twelve they were just going to be gassed for the whole rest of the year. And they held us in pretty much every game. Um, we, you know, it was, you know, we had some stinkers towards the end, but um, they, they, they were the team last year because we couldn't, our offense was so pathetic after a while. So, I mean, you, you just saw it in the two series that Rogers played, what a difference just kind of having the smarts on, you know, making some quick adjustments to plays and how he, he made the offense move even even when the offensive line wasn't creating huge holes. We moved down the field with them. So. Right. You know, uh, our receiving room, right now we have seven players, and we used to debate, are we going to carry five or six? Yeah, really? <laughs> so there was kind of a surprise. Uh, but with that said, uh, it came over the wire the other day that uh, Joe Douglas and uh, Robert Sala had, like, three or four receivers into camp, <laughs> including uh, Kenny Galladay, which is which to me is incredible. But the one name that keeps coming up is Mike Evans of the um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I, I think I'm going to start with Ray. Would you pursue uh, Mike Evans? And if so, how high a draft pick would you give them knowing that we don't know if our 2024 pick to Green Bay is going to be a first or second? We're hoping it's going to be a first. But what are your thoughts on pursuing Mike Evans? Uh, I, I think our, you know, there's one ball that's got to go around to a lot of guys as it is. And I think you had Evans. And I think there's just, I, I think it's just, we don't need him, I don't think. I, I mean, I like the guy a lot, but. It, we'd have to probably give up another first, which would mean either two years without a first rounder or, uh, or uh, if we're unlucky next year's, but um, I just think we've got the receivers we need. I think uh, there are other things that are more pressing needs. I, I really like the guy, but I think he'd cost us a lot, a lot. And I just don't know if it's worth it at this point. Ralph, do you think we'd have to give up a first or a second for him? No, I don't. I don't because uh, he's on his last year, uh, and I think the, the Tampa doesn't have a whole lot of leverage because he doesn't really want to play for them because they're rebuilding. Uh, you know, Devonta Adams is another guy I hear like the rumors that you, he's gonna he's gonna want out. Now he, I think he'd have to give a first for. But uh, what do you think we'd have to give up for him? From for. for for Evans, I was thinking a third plus something else, or maybe just a second. If it was a second, it would be a twenty twenty five second. Right. Uh, but, right. Uh, and, and then I'd sign him for three years, two years guaranteed, so he could be in the same window as Rogers. Uh, I, I would like the idea. I, I, I cannot believe they're going to stick with those seven guys. I, I feel like Charles is going to get dropped eventually. Uh, uh, yeah. My, I my, yeah, my also my other concern is, and I remember <clears throat> hearing uh, Sal or Joe Douglas say it, last year when when Corey Davis got hurt, he said a wide receiver room got really small, and if we if Lazard gets hurt, then it's the same thing is going to happen. And Evans is a, Evans is just a a guy who's there all the time. He plays uh, yeah. every year. He's never hurt. <clears throat> I I would love it. I think that would make them so dynamic, and it would keep them from. Uh, scheming toward uh, Garrett Wilson all the time. So, uh, you know, again, these these draft picks, I know it's painful, but, you know, we've been sitting around for 50 years waiting to build a team through the draft, and it doesn't work for us, apparently. So I think well, we've got to go for it. <laughs> true, but we've also, we've also tried the free agent route, which has yeah, been Yeah, poorly, poorly. The thing about the free agent route is 
We tried it when we were a lousy team. Right. I think you go free agents when you just need guys to put you over the top, yeah. uh, which is the situation now. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all in on this, uh, yeah, this I, year. I would be also. And when you, when you consider giving up a second and then you're kind of leading towards the Los Angeles Rams philosophy when they went to the Super Bowl, giving up all their draft picks. But I kind of agree that, you know, you know what you're getting. And with the draft picks, you don't know uh, what you're going to be getting. Well, but, you also don't know if we're drafting a wide receiver. That doesn't, you know, just because we have right. a draft pick doesn't mean it'd be used on a receiver either. But the yeah. odds of getting a guy who's going to be a, a, a Hall of Fame nominee is is, is very slim <laughs> in, right. in, in the draft. Right. Uh, now, Ray, just to your point about offensive line, if there was a really good offensive lineman who was hanging out there, I agree with you. I'd, I'd go for him before mm -hmm. I'd go for the wide receiver. But I, I don't know. Now that Zach Martin was signed, they're really yeah. the guys available are, you know, the same old usual suspects. Uh, I, I guess, you know, like if it was what you said with three years and, uh, you know, a third or maybe a second into a third and something else, I'd, I'd be – definitely be more open to that the the thing to keep in mind is that both hardeman and and uh cobb and uh who's Lizard. the other uh, lazard lazard yeah, signed for a few years but yeah. those guys are like one year guys right so, yeah you know if he's around for a few years that would make more sense right I'm, yeah you know, and hardeman who do we we don't know about hardeman yet you know yeah. uh, although I, I have a feeling kansas city's regretting getting rid of hardeman after what happened last oh, night God, <laughs> sure <it was> <laughs> Demarius <laughs> Tony huh? put on a show. Yeah, he did. <laughs> but I, I think we're all in agreement, and considering what happened this week, that they're not through with the wide receiver room. Okay. Yeah. You, know, you know who else they had in Marty? They and right, they had Jeff Smith oh, I and, saw Mim, that. and Mims in. And I'm thinking, what are these? I, I feel like this is just I, I, this, I, this is just I, a ploy, a, 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 some kind wait, of ploy. Wait, wait, hold, hold, that would be hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I know about Jeff Smith. Are you sitting there telling me they had Denzel Mims? I, that's, I read that. I don't. I, I think that was a typo. I, they're not going to do that. They're well, I, I think this whole thing is a play. I think it's like a sending a signal. We're looking at other guys, so we're not only thinking about Mike Evans. I don't know. You know. Oh I, yeah, I mean, that could be true. Yeah, that could be true. Setting out, you know, um, uh, a, a false look, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Bryce Huff. It, it, I think it's. We all agree. He, he and the stats show that when he's on the field and he was on for under thirty percent of the defensive snaps, he's one of the most efficient uh, defensive ends, pass rushing defensive ends in the league. Okay, um, if he does have a first half strong season, do you see Joe Dulles extending him during the year? Ralph, I'll start with you. I hope he does. I I don't know why everyone assumes that we're just going to turn up back on him and get a third round compensatory pick. You know, if if he keeps getting better, I mean, his talent is so such such an, at a, such a premium. I, I wouldn't want to let him go. I really wouldn't. Carl Lawson's going to be gone. I think Michael Clemens, you know, might move inside. It, the way Salas' defense is uh, predicated is on rotating and. Uh, I, I hope he does, and I, I think he will. Uh, I don't know. How do you feel about it, Ray? Uh, I, I want him to. I'm like you. I want him to. I just am not. I, I think I'm surprised he hasn't done it by now. So, you know, he's a little under the gun now to do it, or, or he'll probably definitely lose him after, you know, after this year. I don't think you could keep him around. Um, I, I hope so. I just – I'm – I think a lot might depend on how Jermaine Johnson does more. That's than, true. I think if Jermaine Johnson looks like who they drafted him to be, and I, 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 you know, I have no doubt about Will McDonald at this point. He just, to me, is going to be somebody who just keeps getting better and better. I think as as the year goes on. I mean, it's hard to judge by the preseason. It's just him, his abilities and his athletic moves just make him look like somebody who. Right, you know, barring catastrophe, will just get better and better. But uh, so I'm leaning towards no, but boy, I sure hope he does. I really want him around. 
I, I hope he does, and I, I think he will. I mean, Lawson's – I don't think it will be during the year, though, Ralph. I just no. don't think because Lawson's uh, salary is still on the books, and he might need that uh, room in the salary cap. He's adjusted a few things if they do get like a Mike Evans. But I think at the end of the year, I think that possibly they'll, they're going to do it and they should do it. Um, I'm going to throw in my one question here, Ralph. Oh, no boy. Daddy, I'll start with Ray. <laughs> I'm going to name, support. I'm going to name three players. Which one would be the most surprising to you if he was named inactive on Monday night? Okay. I'm not saying any of them will be. Right. One of these three, I'll start with Ray. Who would you think, who would be the most surprising? Here we go. Will McDonald, Carl Lawson, or Brees Hall? The most surprising to me would be Will McDonald. Um, the one because Brees Hall, if they don't feel he's quite ready, that's a possibility. Lawson, did he play the the, the he didn't preseason? Play at all. preseason? He didn't uh, play at all. Yeah. So neither of those guys would surprise me. Although I wouldn't be surprised if they aren't. Like you say, it's no guarantee either way. But I, I can't imagine that they're going to hold Will McDonald out at this point. Okay, Ralph, how about you? Which one would surprise you the most? That's a tough question. I would go with it. Yeah, I'd say Lawson would be the least surprising. Um, I would say I would say probably Brees Hall. I Brees Hall would be the most Yeah, because, I mean, they, they do still have a lot of depth, uh, more depth at, uh, at, at uh, defensive end. And remember, Bryce uh, well, and, uh, Hoffman Don deactivated and, the first two and maybe the first three yeah. games last year. And uh, Dalvin Cook is also not, you know, we don't know where he's at health wise either. He's he's been yeah, that's along slowly. That's so. the other one I wonder. Yeah. If you said, well, Cook's, you know, definitely playing, I'm more likely to be less surprised mm -hmm. by Hall than if they say Cook's not. Then I'd say, you know, if Hall's ready to go, they're going to put him out there. I, I would be the most surprised, uh, Will McDonald. Again, what this guy shows, and again, I've said it a couple times. You see this guy with his bend, how he gets so low to the ground. To me, it's just incredible. And everyone's concerned about his weight. But people forget that, you know, he played both on the outside and the inside of college. Yeah, he'll so, put weight on, you know. He'll, he will he'll put weight that, on. Yeah. They all do. Yeah. So I. Well, not, not all of them. The guy on uh, Buffalo um, from uh, who they Bob picked Miller? up. No, not Von Miller. The other one they just picked up this year. I always oh. forget his name. Uh, Tall guy from the not Bears. Russo. He was no, there. not Russo. He's he, this guy's around thirty years old. What the heck is his name? Uh, he's from Georgia. Uh, anyway, he he came in the league at six six two forty, and he still is, which is a tall drink of water. Yeah. He's been a very effective uh, mm -hmm. player. Who is it, Marty? You know, I always blank on his name. <laughs> I, 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 you know what? Where did he play before the Bills? I think he was he was on the Bears originally. Uh, I think he was on San Diego, maybe, or I'm in mean, the Chargers. Uh, what, the heck is what, what 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 would you say? What's the point with this guy? As I look, the at point it? with this guy is uh, he's taller and thinner than Will Rob McDonald when he came in the league, and still is, and he's been extremely effective. So you know, everyone there's different shapes and sizes as far as succeeding, but I expect McDonald's going to fill out a little more. Let it fly. Yeah, yeah. Floyd. Yeah, Leonard Floyd's really good. Yeah, yeah, he's really good, and he's tall and slender. And, uh, you well, know, you so know, the Giants yeah. picked up that Isaiah, uh, what's his name? Simmons, 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 yeah. He isn't a big guy. And look what he did against the Jets. He was all over the place. And, well, yeah, he's an I mean, athlete. He wasn't, he wasn't that position before. He was no. They were, they were, they 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 did some screwy things with him in Arizona. Right. Yeah. But they, yeah, it looks like a nice pickup if he's you got his head straight. Uh, so I, I'm hoping. Look, I, I hope all three: Will McDonald, Carl Lawson, and and Brees Hall are all activated. I think we all agree. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a huge Will McDonald fan. Obviously, with the seven receivers, one possibly two, I think will be deactivated. Yeah. Let's move I, on. That I said I had one question. I have another one, but I'm going to save it. You're going to love that one, Ray. All right. Um, <laughs> Who do you think is the best player on the Jets right now? And I'm going to start. Yeah. I think without a doubt, it's Queen and Williams. Because if it, it, the guy is phenomenal, if you look at the game they lost to Buffalo, they started driving the ball when he went out of the game. 
this guy, I expect such a great season from, he, he's terrific on the run. He's terrific uh, on the pass. I think the players love him. And as I said, when he went out, the defense didn't totally collapse, but they got so much weaker. So I think Queen and Williams is the best player on the Jets. And now, Ralph, I want your opinion. Well, Marty, it's before I heard you say this, I agree with you. Uh, it's so funny. The other day I was just watching some of his highlights from last year. And I, I think the guy is ready when Aaron Donald steps down from being the considered the best interior defensive lineman in the league, that he'll take it over. Chris Jones, he's not even playing now. Uh, yeah, I think the guy is amazing. I mean, his power and his quickness, great combination. And uh, I just agree with you on that one. I, you know, but, and I had a point in, uh, in making in this question was because I'd say there's four or five legitimate answers to this question that you could give. And actually, Brees Hall would be another if he uh, hadn't been hurt. Um, is that when I think about answering this question maybe four years ago, I mean, you couldn't find a guy who you could say was the best player on this team. The roster has changed so dramatically. It's unbelievable. And now I want to hear what Ray has to say. Who? Uh... Well, I I kind of took the obvious answers, which, I, you know, because normally in one of these questions, it's usually on offense and on defense because you're kind of comparing the best overall player. Well, clearly on offense, you know, Rodgers is the best guy. Is he the best overall player? I don't know, but he changes our offense a hell of a lot, which will make the defense better. That's for sure. Um, and Williams, I love the guy and, and he's done nothing but get better every year, but I thought, well, I had a feeling Marty was going to go with him. I wasn't sure about you, Ralph. <laughs> so I just, you know, tried to say someone else. And I, I said, you know, if our D de our defensive backfield, I think if, if sauce does his thing again this year, that makes the rest of the DBs better because it lets the other guys focus more on their guy and not worry about the one. And so, but where Williams comes in and that too is our defensive line decides how good our DBs are, you know, the more pressure they get and everything. So the quarterback isn't just sitting back there, you know, they're going to look better, but I, I I'm going with sauce just because uh, um, he, he just, he, he's not, I don't think he's quite at Revis range of, you know, the, shutting out the one side of the field but he's close he's he's really something and, I, and if he's uh anything improved at all over last year that can only be a, a big plus okay um all right that three good answers i mean you know two on q and, and one on sauce i mean all right ray let, let me start with you uh this year who is going to lead the jets yeah i guess in touchdown scored Touchdown scored. Uh, let's see. That's the question, right, Ralph? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Uh, I thought about a lot of guys on this one, and I would have gone if, if we had a more of an offensive line. I would have said one of the running backs, but I'm not sure we can, you know, punch it in from a yard out even at this point. So I'm going with uh, Garrett Wilson. Although I, I kind of thought about a tight end maybe because Rogers is so good at spreading it around in the end zone, and but I'll, I'll go with Garrett Wilson. Ralph, let me chime in. Let me go next because yeah. he mentioned tight end. I, I think that you're going to see an incredible amount of double teaming on Garrett Wilson this year. Yeah. Uh, Brees Hall is one of my favorite Jets. I don't know how well he's going to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, you had mentioned tight end. I'm going to go with Tyler Conklin. Mm -hmm. I, I love the way that guy plays. I think he was uh, kind of underrated last year. If you remember the first game or game and a half, he dropped like his first three passes. And since then, he was okay, and that's playing without a quarterback. So I'm going to go – I'm going to say Tyler Conklin is going to lead the Jets in, um, in in touchdowns. And part of it is I think they're going to they're going to have a two and three, like, tight end sets in, in close, too. So that's what I'm going to go with. And what Ralph said also is a point also is that um, they, they – if um, Lazard somehow gets hurt, they all of a sudden they become very small. Brownlee, as good as he had in preseason, he's still a question mark, though we all like him. So I'm going to say Tyler Conklin. Uh, so I guess if, if uh, you know, the problem with the running backs is I think Cook and Hall will split. So uh, because of that, I'm going to, I'm going to go with uh, Wilson too, because I just think Rodgers is just going to be looking for that guy all the time. He he's, absolutely loves him. 
And, and if I wasn't going to pick him, I would have picked Tyler Conklin too, because I, I think he's a, an under the radar jet. You know, he was dropping some, but the passes that he was getting throw behind him, up high, low, and right, it right. was really, it was really frustrating. And uh, yeah, as as yeah. as Ray and I know, we had no quarterback last year. So we were, we were playing with one hand tied behind our back, which I I never understood that expression. But because uh, what do you tie, what do you tie it to? But uh, it's basically what they were what they were doing right. last year. And Ralph, what about interceptions? Who do you think is going to lead the Jets in interceptions this year? I'm going to go with I'm going to go with my my guy who I have now nicknamed Bubble Wrap Tony Adams because the Jets have him <laughs> in Bubble Wrap yeah. he never plays but I you know the, the fascinating thing about Tony Adams is guy was an undrafted safety and when you figure you know and he he had a good career at Illinois but he's undrafted safety and you figure what's the first thing you reason you figure. 40 yard time, right? You assume right. he had a slow, just like Trey Dean. That was the reason he wasn't drafted. He had a 4.75, I think. I looked up Tony Adams' 40 time, 4.49. So, uh, I, you know, why why some guys get passed up, I don't know. They make a lot of mistakes in the draft. And I think he's got the range, and uh, they love him. I mean, they're absolutely crazy about him. They, so I, I think, you know, playing that position, I think the thing with Sauce Gardner is I think they won't throw his way a lot. Right, right. So, I uh, agree. And I, I agree. hope he doesn't start thinking interception because the way he played last year was just fine with me. If he gets two picks and nobody uh, scores a touchdown on him, that's 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 fine with me. I, I just say something about Sauce. I thought – Last year he got away with a lot. Number he did. One. Number two, I thought rookie especially. He shied away with with some tackles. Sometimes, sometimes he was aggressive. And sometimes and, he shy. Yeah. And on the clips I saw in the preseason, he still got away with uh, a lot of different things. I think the referees, you know, they hire each team hires these referees. I don't know if they were afraid to call it or what, but I he got away with stuff, but. Let's see what happens with the sophomore year. Ray, who yeah. did lead the team in interceptions? So who um, did you say, Marty? You I'm th- going to say DJ Reed. I think oh, okay. this guy, he's going to put his money <laughs> where his mouth is. Good and, call, Ralph, uh, he never said anything. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to say uh, DJ Reed. I think um, this guy is one of the best free agent signings the Jets have made in a long time, and I wish he didn't open his mouth. But I, I I agree with Ralph. <laughs> They're not going to throw the sauce aside a lot. So I'm going to say uh, DJ Reed. And by the way, let me just add something. My big thing was, uh, and Ralph, you were on the show, how the Jets don't get any turnovers. They didn't. Mm. And Ray convinced me because of their pass rush, we're going to see a lot more turnovers this year. I think they, in the last six games, they only had two. Yeah. So, I'm booking on what you said, Ray. I'm putting pressure on you. <laughs> uh, all right, Ray, who's going to lead them in interceptions? No, you're putting pressure on our best player on the team, Quinn and Williams, is who you're putting pressure on. <laughs> He's got to get there. Um, I'm going with, well, I said Eccles, but is he only out for one game? or is One he game. One, one game. game. I'm going with Eccles. Eccles, wow. 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 That, is, that is out of left field, huh? <laughs> what about Aletha Faith? He, I would have gone with the I- – Carter. After the first game of the preseason, I didn't even want him on the team. Well, but, that, <laughs> that, that, what what concerns me about that prediction is that to me that says that someone's going to get hurt if he's going to be playing. That well, if it wasn't Eccles, I was going to say Michael Carter. I think the other two won't get the opportunities well, as well. I, I yeah. think you know it's funny. I actually think Michael Carter has the potential to be a great intercepting back, me defensive too. back. I oh, really I think don't. he picked, if I remember correctly, he picked one off last year for a touchdown, but <laughs> yeah, something they, happened. I can't yeah, remember. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Against the Patriots. That, that's, that's an interesting <laughs> choice, uh, Ray. By the way, Ralph, are you uh, documenting all this? Because I'm not. Yeah, I, I have it all memorized. Yeah, Ralph has a good memory. All right. Uh, okay, I'm going to start with this one. Of these three, who will have the most sacks this year? Jermaine Johnson's, Will McDonald, or Bryce Huff? Uh, I'm going to go with Bryce Huff. Just because I think he's going to get more repetitions, but I think on every sure passing down, he's going to be in there. So I think he's going to have the most sacks. Jermaine Johnson, I think is he's more all around, and you know how much I love Will McDonald, but I'm going to go with Bryce Huff. Ray, who do you say? 
I'm I'm with Huff too. I think Jermaine Johnson has to show me that he can get there. Um, but I I like Jermaine Johnson because he he doesn't just rush the quarterback. He, he I think he's a, a good all around guy to have. And uh, and I think Will McDonald will come on as the year goes along. But I I think it's gonna he's gonna he's gonna have moments where they're, they're gonna keep an eye on him and struggle a little. He's gonna struggle a little bit. I think early. I think he'll come on towards the end of the year, but I think Huff is consistently the guy who's always a threat to get there. Yeah, and I wanted to ask Ralph, but we brought this up last year. Do you remember a, a few plays they tried him on the inside? And then we both agree, why even do that with Bryce Huff? Just leave him on the outside. Yeah. You know, know. Why, why play with success? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I agree with you on Huff. It seems to me like he just gets a sack every game, you know. It's just a, right. And I, I agree with Ray on McDonald. I think as the year goes on, he'll he'll, he'll come on toward in the second half more. Uh, I was going to ask the question: Who's going to get more sacks this year, Jermaine Johnson or Kayvon Thibodeau? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. That's a very good question. I would have <laughs> probably went with Thibodeau. Yeah, I think he's he's the guy. I think I go with Thibodeau because he'll get more snaps than Jermaine Johnson. Yeah, he uh, will uh, absolutely, absolutely will. All right, Ralph, who's gonna rush for more yardage, Brees Hall or Dalvin Cook? And let me go the record again. I think I could say that I don't think all any three of us really wanted Dalvin Cook. Is that right? I didn't want him. I I, I didn't feel like they needed him. Uh, Ray, you didn't want him, did you? I wasn't big on it. I was okay when they got him at the price they did, but uh, I wasn't, uh, you know, I, and I, I thought, well, we weren't sure yet if they were pulling the same, you know, if Salah was doing the same thing with Hall that he did with uh, Zach last year. Oh, he looks good. He's almost, yeah. then he was, you know, out for four, six weeks, whatever it was last year. So uh, I was okay with it for the price, but I, I didn't think we necessarily needed him. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go, go. Did you say who you thought was going to rush for more? Paul or Cook, Ray? No, oh, I didn't. I, I said uh, I said Cook, but because uh, I think they're going to feed him a lot, especially early. Right. So, you know, bring uh, him in. I'm going to ditto what you said. I think they're going to bring uh, Brees Hall along slowly. And again, you know, one of my questions before, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not activated. I don't care what Salah says. The first game, so uh, I'm going to say Cook. All right. Um, uh, let me answer that one. Go ahead, Ralph. Go I'm going to say I'm going to say Hall. I mean, watching him in practice, he's cutting pretty pretty well. I don't think necessarily think he'll play a lot at the beginning, but it's a long season, and I think when he hits his stride, <laughs> he'll be the number one back. But uh, it'll be close. It'll be close. Ralph, why don't you start with the next one? Aaron Rodgers stats this year: TDs, interceptions. And the uh, yards. Okay, I'd go like thirty-five touchdowns, ten interceptions, and about forty-three hundred yards. Which, by the way, touchdowns and yards would break uh, jet records in both cases. Okay, Ray, why don't you go? Well, I got thinking about that after uh, after a while that we aren't. I, I'm not convinced we can run the ball yet very effectively. So uh, originally, I, I was going to say you know, 25, and then I bumped it up to, I think, 30 TDs, probably about 11 picks, I thought, because he'll take some chances. Maybe, you know, that might even be a little low. And I said about 4,500 yards. Wow. Uh, I, I'm I'm a little richer. I'm going 44 TDs. <laughs> a little richer. <laughs> eight interceptions and 4,200 yards. I think he's going to get a lot of TDs in the – the red zone, we're going to see a different aspect of jet football in the red zone. I don't know if Even, a lot of those TDs are going to necessarily long passes to Garrett Wilson for, you know, 50 plus yards, but I think he's going to have a, a, a great year. And, and a lot of that's uh, doing with the, with the balance. We have to see about the offensive line. Ray, Dwayne Brown and Mackay Becton, the season is 17 games. So that's between them, that's 34. How many games will both these players start together? And I guess that is oh, 17. No, it's, it's 17. It's not 34. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I'm going a little high here. I said five if we're lucky. 
Five. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm going <Okay>. for broke. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go. Now. I'm going to say twelve. I, I don't like Mackay Becton, as you guys know. And wait till you see my the next question that I'm going to ask. <laughs> I'm going to say twelve. Ralph. I actually am going to say thirteen. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm feeling you very optimistic are, you are about feeling it. <laughs> yeah. I got to see it. I mean, <laughs> the other the, the other guy Brown, he played the whole year with a a torn shoulder, yes. so yeah. he'll play. Uh yeah. and uh, I think Makai will play that, you know. I think I, you I know, know, after, I next year next right. year is a different story, but this year <laughs> well, he's, cha he's chasing money. Well, then Ralph, I'm going to start with you. The, this question is my my second and last question that I added. Okay, and Ray will lead the lap and shake his head. A game a Monday night against Buffalo. I'm putting you have five choices. <laughs> what quarter will Mackay Becton go into the tent? Will it be the first <laughs> quarter, second, third, fourth, or none at all? Well, I hear there might be rain, so if it starts raining early, he'll use that as an excuse to get out of the rain. But I'll say second quarter. Second quarter. <laughs> and Ralph, you, you would think he's going to play a lot of games. I'm surprised. Well, he's, he's I said it, he'll come back out, though. Okay. Because <laughs> Aaron, Aaron Rodgers will get in there and give him a pep talk. Uh. What, what do you say, Ray? First quarter. <laughs> you know, not, I, not the first drive, though. I think he'll last maybe <laughs> to the third uh, drive. But, uh, uh, I agree with Ray. I think the first quarter. <laughs> First quarter, not the first drive. I think he'll be okay. But, you know, it's. Uh, I remember last year, I don't know if it was against him, the, the guy, Rousseau, he killed us. Yeah, well, you know, they get they catch. he catches a break because Von Miller isn't there, and I think that's right. his side. Uh, he comes on, yeah. on a lot. So uh, that, that, good. that's good. <laughs> but, but Russo is one of these. Uh, I find that Becton, he could overpower the smaller guys, but if a guy's a, like a little longer and taller like him, he has a little bit of trouble with them. So um, I hope I'm not drinking the Mackay Becton Kool Aid from the last month. What everyone's saying, all this kumbaya, and how he's a change play and everything. You know, I go by the eye test, so I want to see how he does. Ralph, you got to interpret the next question for me. Question number thirteen. What does that mean? Uh. What, what did it say? 12, 14, 20. Yeah. This is the, 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 year, the year of ending bad streaks. Now, what is the, the 12 streak? That's uh, 12 years since we've been in the playoffs. What's the 14? Oh, 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 oh. Um, Four, 14 games was lost in a row to the Patriots. That oh, ends oh. on week three. That ends on week three, or I am on a ledge. If they can't beat that team at home when they're going to be sight, oh, God. Um, and, and what's the 20? The 20 is the most shocking one. That's the last time the Jets have won the AFC East. That you know, that that was when the Pennington took over in 2002. We drilled the Colts, yeah, right. So, right. so the question is, what? what? Well, that's not the question. I think this year, those three streaks are going to end. We better beat the Patriots. I, 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 I know. East, huh? it, did you see the news about Bill Belichick? His girlfriend broke up with him. No, I didn't. Yeah, it was excellent. That that means he, he's going to screw up his game plan. Big news on TMZ. Wow, they're trying to dig into it. So that's uh, that's interesting too. He was with her for like nineteen years after mm. or something like that. So that's good. All right, here we go. Prediction for the season. The record and the Buffalo game. Let me start out. Let's start with the negative, Nancy. I'm going to say the Jets are going to lose 27-14, but I'm going to say there's going to be a silver lining because they're all going to come back to earth and they're going to win the AFC East with a 14-3 and record. Woo! 14-3. and Wow. Okay. Ralph? Uh, you know what, Marty? This is crazy, but I, I like the Jets, and I the score I was coming up with was 27-14. I think that emotions, they're, they're, they're just going to have so much energy for that game. And I also think Buffalo, you know, these teams that, that are on top for three or four years, you know, and I think it's going to happen with Kansas City this year, not just because of last night, but I think, you know, teams can only stay on top so long. And um, I think I like the, but, you know, you asked me if I, I'm keeping track of these predictions, Marty. 
Last year, if I remember correctly, Ray and I both predicted the Jets were going to win seven games. We had said seven games, and if they play competitively, which is exactly what happened, it didn't happen in the order we thought it was going to happen in. <laughs> so Ray and I were on a roll from last year. I think they're going to go 12-5 and five this year, which I think will be enough to win the AFC East. Wow. Okay, great. So we have uh... – so far, Ralph is predicting the Jets are going to win. And I'm predicting they're going to lose. So Ray is the uh, the game breaker. Go ahead, well, Ray. I will be the. Uh, I will take Marty's spot as the negative Nancy here. But uh, although not completely, the record wise is where I'm not. Until I see our offensive line holds up, I score. Can't. What's the score of the game going to be? Uh, well, first of all, I think the Jets will win. And I oh. think it's going to be a close game, though. I, I don't think the Jets blow anybody out when they're on national TV. I think they always squeak by. I'm going to say 24-21 Jets. Trying to sound positive and feel positive about things. Now, record, I, this is a brutal schedule if everybody plays – the way they look on paper, <laughs> this is a, which they want. Uh, no, they don't. But you never know who's going to be the ones who are and aren't playing like last year. So right now, until I see our offensive line is solid and holds up, I, I'm going with ten and seven. Mm -hmm. Well, the way I feel, I know it is a tough schedule, but remember, everyone else in the AFC East has tougher. Yeah, Buffalo's, our, Buffalo's our getting, division itself. Buffalo's oh. is tougher because they're they're two yeah. extra games. In the, in the AFC are Jacksonville and Cincinnati, whereas the Jets yeah. get Houston and, and Cleveland. So yes. Buffalo, and and, the, and I think the uh, Jets also have 10 games at MetLife because they have the way game with the Giants. So right. I think I think they're, uh, I think while, while the, the schedules are tough for everyone. Mm -hmm. I, um, yeah, well, they are. But yeah. I looked at ours and I thought, you know, like you say, you, you don't know going into the season that, it's one thing, but as it plays out, a lot yeah. of teams aren't. Could, could aren't I just? Maybe. I'm sorry. Could I just interrupt? And that, that's not breaking news. 42 minutes ago, from Connor Hughes, Mackay Becton is not practicing today because he has an illness. <laughs> as per Robert Sala, so that's wow. illness is better than a ankle tweak or something. Is he, is he in the tent? <laughs> we. <laughs> it's not even the first quarter. All right. <laughs> So let's uh, let's we we covered a lot of ground. We're all excited for uh, Monday night. I know Ralph is going to take a four o'clock nap just so he <laughs> can stay up and watch the game. Ray is uh, probably adjusting his work schedule. I'm taking Tuesday uh, off. Hopefully, we we'll do a uh, good idea podcast <laughs> Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, um, so um, let's see, Ralph. Go over now. What was the uh, trivia, the trivia question, question that we did uh, about four hours ago? Yeah. All right. Uh, do I remember it? Yeah. So until next Monday, until this Monday, when this streak will end too, who was, what was the last uh, home opener? The Jets won. Who was their starting quarterback for? Ray, you want to start? Ray usually gets these, you know. I I'm just throwing one out there. Vinny Testaverde. Oh, wow. <laughs> <That's so wrong. laughs> I, I'm throwing one out. I'm saying Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold. No, the answer is Josh McCown. Wow. <laughs> it was I, when you said, I would have missed it by a mile if you had Yeah, 27 2017 they beat Miami. Yeah, Josh McCown. Uh that streak will end too uh, on Monday. So wow. uh, another yeah. streak. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so for uh hey listen, make sure uh you listen to us on uh Spotify or Apple Podcasts and give us a good review. You can tell us how you like our new uh Jets Rewind t-shirts and all that. And we didn't see Ray's cat today, which uh, we miss. He's our... This uh, is the one who... Uh, this is the girl who had the seizures. Oh, it is? Yeah. And how's she doing now? Doing good. I got to bring my walking, wife. That's a plus. <laughs> what? She's walking. That's Hold a her plus. up again. Hold her up again. Because I'm going to skip her. Good for you, Ray. Okay. Get Ray's a cat lover. Oh, she looks great. She looks great. All right. For Ray, what's her name? Fuzzy butt. <laughs> okay, for Ray Clifford, uh, butt. Ralph Sharega, really roll, really rolls off the tongue. <laughs> and Fuzzy Butt. Enjoy the game Monday night. Enjoy uh, NFL opening on Sunday. Until next time.